Good morning, everyone. Brian here again with BMK Retro Gaming. This morning, I have for us the review of the Atari 5200 prototype game, Millipede. Now, um, <clears throat> forgive me, my uh, seasonal allergies have been acting up a bit. The, the arcade cabinet original was developed uh, by Ed Long and Mark Searney in 1984 for Atari Incorporated or Atari Inc. And then um, in 1984, this prototype was being worked on with the programmer. Uh, it would have been published by Atari Inc., of course, and the programmer doing the development would have been Stephen R. Crandall. Then Gary Johnson would have done graphics, and Brad Fuller would have done the artwork, such as for uh, cartridge label box, etc. And it would have been known by the designation CX-5248. Of course, it never quite released, because 1984 was about the time, uh, somewhere in there, that uh, Warner Communications sold uh, the company over to Jack Tramiel and Mr. Tramiel uh, under his new management among the other things that were cancelled at all to cut back on costs and stuff things like that was pretty much everything Atari 5200 um, related so that's pretty much why it wasn't really released though as it goes um, it is a pretty much complete prototype game now, um, it also would have been known originally by the name of Centipede Plus before it was changed to Millipede. And in it, there are a few differences. There's not really any manual or anything I found. I think someone has published someone somewhere that they created by, couldn't find it. And actually, having gotten this uh, in the package just on Friday, I had to rush to do my research and everything. So anyway, the pretty much basics are... Uh, the premise is uh, kind of similar to Centipede, except for Millipede, you are apparently um, an archer who is protecting your mushroom garden of apparently giant mushrooms, I guess, from giant insects, which in this case include, in place of the Centipede, you have the Millipede, who is pretty much the same, but a bit larger. Again, the spider returns, but this time you can have one, two, or three of them at one time, which increases the challenge. Uh, then there are beetles who basically just, um, they, uh, walk along the, they drop down and walk along the bottom side of the screen, and then at some point they come up, and they'll poison any mushroom they hit when they're coming up there. Also, you have to watch out for them because on bottom they can take you out pretty easy if you're not paying enough attention. Uh, then there are also, um... Mosquitoes who kind of come down and, uh, I forget all the details with them, uh, and then there, there are uh, bees who come down, they, they kind of replace the flea from centipede and they fall straight down. Then there are inchworms who inch across the screen, and, um, when they do so, they kind of cause some of the other enemies to slow, most of the other enemies to slow down. Then you have dragonflies who come down, uh, and kind of similar to bees and mosquitoes, except they have a zigzag pattern. And they sometimes come down, uh, these uh, bees and mosquitoes, uh, dragonflies, others, will sometimes come down in waves in between rounds. And then, of course, you have earwigs who kind of are a replacement for the uh, uh, scorpions from Centipede. Uh, let me see. Uh, then you basically get an extra life at about every about 15,000 points, but it depends on where you start uh, with your starting score. It may vary some. So like with me playing, checking this out, I know sometimes it seems like about every 10,000 when I start from zero, though I'm not sure about that. And basically that's mostly what there is to know about it. Um, there's also the boxes labeled DDT, which are basically dynamite, and uh, if you have, it's kind of tough to do right, but if you have the right type of timing and hit them just about right, they can take out a good number of enemies and mushrooms too at one time. 
Basically, it's an updated, uh, what's supposed to be a more difficult version of Centipede. But it was changed to Millipede, which is, um, interesting. In this case, it appears to have been mostly, um, uh, derived not as a direct arcade port from the arcade cabinet original, but, um, according to my research from what I could find, looks like it was mostly, um, developed based on the, uh, Atari 8-bit port, which came before it. And, of course, there was also an Atari VCS 2600 port, too, which, uh, in some regards, some consider better, but I played it through emulation, don't own a copy yet. Anyway, don't want to sit here and talk about it too, too terrible long. Um, I got my uh, copy, as you guys know, from the Atari Age store, and this is basically what the cartridge looks like. It's pretty nice uh, here. Says Millipede, says Atari, uh, video game cartridge, Atari 5200 Super System, Atari 5200. Also says 1988 Atari Corporation, all rights reserved, 5214, uh, 5248. Oh, and reproduction cartridge, it says, so. But then again, I don't know they did any reproductions of these um, uh, with Atari back then, so that's kind of a weird detail. I know it would have been released, it was slated to come out 84, as I said, so. Anyway, and it also has, although it doesn't come with any, you're really, you don't really need them, you do have the slots in the back for the uh, overlays, or where you could potentially place some overlays at, and uh, the protectors and all, pretty nice, um, nice uh, image like we would think of with a uh, millipede there. And in color, so. Anyway, you know, I want to talk about it for too, too terrible long. We already waste about seven minutes on that. I've got my four-port Atari 5200 set up, along with my modern uh, build controller from Retro Game Boys here, which is hooked up with um, my Hyperkin uh, Trooper controller, the original model, from my uh, Hyperkin Retron 77, which... Um, Emulation hardware clone console, which pretty much it's pretty well analogous to a um, uh, an original Atari VCS 2600 joystick. Though this can also be played with an original Atari 5200 trackball controller, which is probably the most ideal way, which also gives you kind of an arcade a feel to the experience, kind of like the arcade cabinet original, but I don't have one. And um, it does play pretty well just with what I do have already. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and toss this into the my 4-port Atari 5200, and we're going to take a look at the gameplay. Okay, so here we go with um, the gameplay for Millipede Atari 5200 uh, prototype game. Okay, as we can kind of see, you can select between two players and one. It's about the options you have though, to my knowledge. We'll go with one player and then you press start to start. I'm going to select to start us off at um, zero for a, and we do have a pause here, so that's good. Okay, again, this might be better with the trackball controller, but um, no biggie. Oh, no you don't. I'm not gonna... I'd re uh, restart it because I'd rather not start it that way. <laughs> press start. Down to zero. And press fire. I'm gonna get rid of that first mushroom real quick. That, if I'm not mistaken, is a B. Or could have been one of the mosquitoes, I forget. I forget which is, which one does which and which is which sometimes. That thing down there crawling around is your uh, beetle, uh, beetle, I think. These are the, uh, I guess this is a swarm of, I don't know if they're supposed to be the mosquitoes or, uh, or the bees for sure. Earned my first extra life at 10,000. There goes the DDT blowing. 
It's pretty quick pace, not maybe as fast as the arcade cabinet original. And obviously it was derived from something uh, probably as figured from the Atari 8-bit port. Or the Atari 8-bit's original library port. There we go, that right there is uh, probably the... Uh, Supposed to be the, the mosquitoes, where I think the other ones were supposed to be bees that just drop. You can hold the button for uh, continual rapid fire rather than just shooting one at a time. Spiders can be worth up to 12,000 points if you get them close enough, 300 uh, further away, I think 600 and like 900 or something like that depending on the distance where you kill them. I always watch for the beetle be because they will be a little bit of a pain in the neck about um They will come straight uh, at you and they sometimes will try to rise to take off uh, crawling back up the screen. Right, uh, if you're right, uh, like here, if I'm like right here, sometimes I'll do it right there. Right under you, so. And apparently, poisoned all lows. I guess that's how it shows it was poisoned. That right there, that little thing I just shot that, uh, these are the, uh, dragonflies, I think. But that little thing that was crawling I just shot was the, uh, earwig. Dadgum spider. Darn, got taken out by a beetle. Darn. You see him until it was too late. This things dropping are supposed to be the bees, if I'm not mistaken. Pretty fun, fast-paced game. Um, again, not quite the same as the arcade cabinet original. Probably obviously, uh, pretty obviously derived from something more like the, uh, that's the inform right there, that little orange thing. And here comes another little uh, earwig, and I got him. They're worth a good number of points. I forget the point values for all of them, since I don't have an instruction manual, but, um, uh, it's kind of similar to Centipede, uh, a little bit of different point values on them. Your ship, when you're firing, kind of looks a bit like uh, the Atari... Uh, something similar to the Atari... Uh, little Atari logo thing, which is kind of a cool effect. Darn, and I had two beetles at one time. Now that was almost unfair. <laughs> they will do that too. They will gang up on you after a while. Other things to know about this one, you know, uh, there are certain strategies you could use in Centipede you can as much here, such as... um creating a mushroom fort uh, for yourself to kind of protect yourself um, for a while. You can't really accomplish that in this uh, this particular game. It doesn't let you. Another centipede, uh, millipede kill. Again, like I was saying at first, the millipede is not much different than the centipede, except for maybe a bit longer. As I recall, millipedes, um, centipedes, generally speaking, are entirely vegetarian or uh, herbivores. Whereas, if I'm not mistaken, I'd have to go back over my research, but centipedes may also be at least sometimes carnivorous in terms of uh, they'll eat meat too. I may be wrong about that, so don't quote me on it. Yeah, run right in my fire like an idiot if you want to. Oh! Hey, 
And there's that. Let's see, got up to 85,963 points. And I have the option to start back at 7,000 if I want to. We still got a little time left, so I'm going to reset down to zero again, and we'll go ahead and give it one more go. Oh, by the way, the DT, DDT explosive boxes are worth points themselves, so... Though it can be kind of tough to time them and uh, time your shots so that you can actually take out anything with them. Um, one more spider down, one extra life earned. Again, it seems to be given to me at 10,000 when I started at zero, so. Which would be kind of the way some people do overall, but uh. I don't think it's really a drawback or anything. It doesn't take away from the fun of the gameplay or anything. There's that earwig and he's gone. And another. Kind of like the, um, uh, The scorpion on centipede, the earwig is worth a good number, a uh, pretty high number of points, so worth getting when you can. Not so sure, but I think the inchworm is also worth a good number of points as well, so. Again, with no manual or anything, I don't know exactly all of the point values for everything here. Just what I've noticed as I've played through some. And believe me, after I got this Friday, I spent a good little deal of time um, going ahead and playing through it some and getting familiar with it the, the best I could. Centipede is actually um, my uh, overall favorite fixed shooter type of game, you know, or platform shooter from the era. So... Of course, one like uh, Millipede, which was supposed to, or it is supposed to have been a sequel, is going to attract my attention to find it to be pretty fun to play, too. As some may have noted, some, you know, as opposed to being based more or less on the Atari 8-bit board, it would have been kind of nicer if this would have been uh, developed and from and based more on the uh, arcade cabinet original directly, but, you know... It's still good for, for what it is, and it plays pretty good, even though, yeah, that is kind of a drawback. It's not a very direct port from the arcade cabinet original. I wouldn't call it a huge one, though. I mean, this still gets by, and I think this would have been pretty good back in the day if it had been released rather than having just been cancelled like it was. I know the ports uh, like the Atari 8-bit and the Atari VCS 2600 port, which were released, um, were pretty well regarded, generally speaking, so... I'm playing this well on it considering while I was playing it, checking it out after I first got it, I couldn't really even break um I couldn't even break up to uh get up to eighty thousand before and I've already done that here reviewing it so of course at the rate I'm going that's probably gonna happen again so easily but oh well Yeah, I want this video to drag out forever, so I wouldn't dare anyway. As I was saying, fun game overall. I've been enjoying it, and um, so it's not a straight arcade port. So what? And it's based on the arcade game originally, even if it was developed from the uh, Atari 8-bit port more so. So. As it goes, it's still an arcade board in the sense that it's based on uh, 
a quarter of the arcade cabinet refills, so. Well, we got good, a lot different, a lot worse than it is, so. Now I beat 90,000, so, ooh. Getting up there a bit. I don't really think at this rate that I'll break 100,000, but who knows. Nope. 95,286. Not too bad, and I could have started back at 80,000, which is not uh, terrible. Anyway, I think you guys have a pretty good idea with the gameplay at this point. Okay, so that was Millipede, uh, 1984 prototype game, uh, unreleased prototype game for the Atari 5200. Is it pretty good? Yes, I think so. Like I was saying uh, during the gameplay portion, it seems from my research to have been based much more on the Atari 8-bit port of Millipede than on uh, the, uh, being a straight arcade port of the arcade cabinet original itself. But that still would make it an arcade port since it's based on a, another port of the arcade cabinet original in a way. So even for that, it's um, not bad at all. And probably would be a lot better if you had a working Atari 5200 trackball controller to play with it. So anyway, um, I think it's pretty good. Uh, hey, right there, you got close to breaking 100,000 points. Can't beat that. Well, you could, but um, I'm not going to try on camera or anything uh, right now. Anyway, uh, so yeah, it's very good as far as I'm concerned. Um, and it's kind of a shame that it got canceled back then instead of being released. Now, as for when it was actually re-released as a reproduction cartridge, I'm not sure as I couldn't find anything on that. Maybe what, like what it says on the uh, cartridge here, 88, maybe for some reason it was re-released as a reproduction cartridge then, though I don't know, and I don't know, since it got canceled, why Atari under Mr. Tremiel would have chosen to do so or not, so. Mm, I can't say for certain about all that. Anyway, I do have a few recommendations and links for you guys, um, from my preferred YouTubers. Tim's Tiny Arcade, uh... He reviews this one uh, as it's included in the Classics Collection, I believe it's called, uh, instead of a physical cartridge. 65 Gamer Guy, Atari Revival, and um, Atari Vintage Players. They all have nice videos on this one. So I will leave recommendations and links to those, as well as ones to the... Uh, there, the Wikipedia article on it for those who may care to read up further and the AtariProtos.com article on it. So you can check into it a bit further those two ways if you like. And it's still available, um, like I got, at the Atari Age store at a base price of $30. So you can get a copy that way. And I double-checked, and it's also still available at Good Deal Games at Homebrew Heaven for $34.75. The difference being uh, the Atari 8 store, you know, this took not quite two months, but getting closer to it to come out since they've had their stock of new games coming in, so they've been a bit slower. But then again, Mr. Uruso, Albert Uruso, who does the Atari 8 store, works alone most of the time from his end, though he does have some co collaborators, so it kind of makes sense. So you'd be weighing a bit more with that, whereas with Good Deal Games and Homebrew Heaven, you might pay a bit more for it, but more than likely you get it a bit quicker. I did double check too, and Good Deal Games and Homebrew Heaven is still on their break, but they are opening reopening on um, April 15th, so about the middle of this next month you'll be able to order a copy easy, and we'll probably get a bit faster. So it just depends, you know, 
with the Atari Age store, you can wait and uh, go ahead and order it and wait for a little bit of extra time it might take to get it. I mean, these games are usually worth the uh, patience required. Or once Good Deal Games and Homebrew have been reopened, you can uh, potentially go ahead and uh, order from them and get maybe a bit faster. So I just leave up to you guys which one you'd prefer to pursue if you decide to get a copy or would like to. I'll go ahead and leave links to both of those, um, one directly to the Atari Age store's listing for it. And Good Deal Games and Homebrew Heaven doesn't really work that way, so I'll just leave a link to their website, and then you just select Atari 5200 as a category and scroll down al uh, alphabetically till you find it. <clears throat> Big shout out to my Atari 5200 Fanatics Facebook group. Love you guys over there, and hopefully this upload will not take too long and you will get it before too late this morning. And, um... As well, you guys go ahead and keep your uh, uh, keep an eye out on my channel's feed, my feed here on YouTube, as well as my feeds on Facebook and Twitter, because I should have the announcement post going up for what this coming Wednesday's Atari 7800 original library review will be. Uh, I pretty well know what it is, and those who've been paying attention to this channel may well have an idea yourselves, so go ahead and I'll have that up somewhat later this morning for you guys to take a look into. And in the meantime, if you guys enjoy this channel's content, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And please don't hesitate to leave any questions, comments, or suggestions down in the comments section below. You guys take care, have a wonderful Sunday, and hopefully I will see everyone back here again this coming Wednesday.